it comes to dinosaurs that are both dangerous and intelligent, none come to mind as quickly as the savage Velociraptor, appearing as a small group of bloodthirsty carnivores in the first movie, with them shown to have one goal of escape in, in the film. It's important to remember that their high intelligence and this escaping techniques came from Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park novel. One scene involving this shows our, some of our main characters, including doctors Ian Malcolm and Alan Grant, taking part in the tour ride for Jurassic Park, and after discovering that dinosaurs were breeding, and while returning back to the control room, they discovered something even worse, something truly chaotic. In a moment, the cars jolted to a stop. What's happened? Grant asked. Up ahead, they saw the kids in the car pointing towards the ocean. Offshore, shore, beneath the lowering clouds, Grant saw the dark outline of the supply boat making its way back towards Punta Arenas. Why have we stopped? Malcolm asked. Grant turned on the radio and heard the girls say excitedly, Look there, Timmy. You see, it's there. Talking about the boat? Apparently, Grant said. Ed Regis climbed out of the front of the car and came running back to their window. I'm sorry, he said, but the kids are all worked up. Do you have binoculars? For what? The little girl says she sees something on the boat. Some kind of animal, Regis said. Grant grabbed the binoculars and rested his elbows on the window ledge of the land cruiser. He scanned the long shape of the supply boat. It was so dark it was almost a silhouette. As he watched, the sh ship's running lights came on, brilliant in the dark purple twilight. Do you see anything? No, Grant said. They're low down, Lex said over the radio. Look low down. Grant tilted the binoculars down, scanning the hull just above the waterline. The supply ship was broad-beamed with a splash of flange, but it was quite dark now, and he could barely make out any details. No, nothing. I can see them, Lex said impatiently. Near the back. Look near the back. How can she see anything in this light, Malcolm asked. Kids can see, Grant said. They've got visual acuity we forgot we ever had. He swung the binoculars towards Cern, moving them slowly, and suddenly he saw the animals. They were playing, darting along with the silhouetted stern structures. He could see them only briefly, but even in the fading light, he could tell they were upright animals, about two feet tall, standing with stiff, balancing tails. You see them now? Lex asked. I see them. What are they? They're raptors, Grant said. At least two. Maybe more. Juveniles. That boat's headed for the mainland, Re Regis said. Malcolm shrugged. Don't get excited. Just call the control room to and tell them to call the boat. Ed Regis reached in and grabbed the radio from the dashboard. They heard a hissing static and clicks as he rapidly changed channels. There's something wrong with this one, he said. It's not working. He ran off for the land, cr first land cruiser. They saw him duck into it and look back at them. There's something wrong with both radios. I can't raise the control room. Then let's get going, Grant said. Along the side of the road, the clouds of volcano Mechanic steam misted rainbows in the light, bright quartz lights. Grant said on the radio, How long does it take the ship to get back to mainland? 18 hours, Regis said, more or less. It's pretty reliable. It should arrive around 11 in the morning. Grant frowned. You still can't talk to the control room? Not so far. How about Arden? Can you reach him? No, I've tried. He may have turned off his radio. Malcolm was shaking his head. So we're the only ones who know about the animals on the ship? I'm trying to raise somebody, Rodriguez said. I mean, Christ, we don't want these animals on the mainland. How long until we get back to the base? From here, another 16, 70 minutes, Rodriguez said. At night, the whole road was illuminated by big floodlights. They felt to Grant as if they were driving through a bright green tunnel of leaves. Large raindrops spattered the windshield. Then, Grant felt the land cruiser slow and then stop. Now what? Lex said she didn't want to stop, 
And then she asked why they stopped. And then suddenly all the floodlights went out and the road was plunged into darkness. Probably just a power outage or something, Edriga said. I'm sure the lights will be back on in any minute. Due to Steven Spielberg choosing not to focus on this plot point of the novel for his film adaptation, this scene would not be used. However, the story of dinosaurs making it to the mainland would be used for the second, third, and fifth films in the franchise, and with Jurassic World Dominion entirely focused on what happens when dinosaurs rule the Earth, I'm sure chaos will thrive. And Interestingly, despite the fact that these characters try to prevent these raptors from reaching the mainland, with it becoming a main part of the story, the reader is shown early on that dinosaurs have already reached the mainland, and it's not just velociraptors. With the compu attacks in Costa Rica being a threat that the government even took notice of. And this scene really shows the failure of Jurassic Park's goals. Control the lives of animals that they knew nothing about. But anyway guys, what do you think of this scene? Is it a favorite of yours? And what other moments w from the novels would you want to s see? Leave it in the comments please. There are literally... Tons to choose from.